And then we'll talk about some angles here. We've got something on that tomorrow. I'm going to give you guys a 25 question test on basic transmission, automatic transmission knowledge. Tomorrow, not today, right? Yeah. Whenever you hear somebody talking about this tomorrow. Whenever you hear somebody talking about short, long arm suspension, that's what they're talking about. You've seen that. The upper control arm is not the same length as the bottom one. And here's your ball joints. And there's your McPherson strut. Now, the McPherson strut is a slightly better design, really, for stability because it carries the weight of the body, I mean, the weight of the car higher in the car. So on the trucks, you know, they turn over easier than a car because of that. Okay, there's your center line. There's your zero reference vertical right there. That's the way that's supposed to be. Okay, so your zero reference vertical. See, if you've got positive camber, it's going to be leaning out on that side. And if negative, negative camber, it's going to be leaning in. Now, if you lay a, if you roll a tire, if you put a tire on your, on the left, lean it over, and you roll it, it's going to go off in the direction that you're leaning it, right? That's why whenever you've got camber like that, it pulls. See what I mean? All right, so your load's projected toward the center of the tire when everything's the way it's supposed to be. That's not real complicated. Okay, now the load's projected toward the outside of the tire when you've got, what's this? Is this positive or negative? Positive. Oh. Positive camber, very good, a good man. All right, so the load's out here, and you see why it would wear it out being projected out here. If the load's projected on the inside, it's going to wear it out in here. You got that? So that's negative camber. This being your zero degrees, and this being the way the tire is laying when it's on. And if you're looking at that front end machine, if you've got one on there, and you can tell that it's got negative or positive camber, usually you can just back up and eyeball that tire, and you can get an idea by looking at it. If you can eyeball it with the back one, and the back one ain't out too. Trim height is here. Trim height is measured from the ground to the fender. You got it? Measure it from here to here. From here to here. Well, some of the Lincolns that had active air suspension on them, you could actually measure it, tell the computer, you know, when you're hooked up to it with a Ford, you know, computer, and you could tell it what the readings were, and it would level it up. You know, some of those cars that had this uh, air suspension on them, like the Mark, uh, Lincoln Marks, uh, would go, if they drop, they lower an inch when they hit like 60 miles an hour, they go down an inch to make them ride closer to the road anyway. All right, here's your correct trim height, like that. You got incorrect trim height. When this spring starts to get a little bit weak and it starts to release that and let it go lower, it's going to cause that camber to go negative, okay? So if you got weak springs, it can make you have negative camber. Not the only thing that can make you have negative camber, but it's really bad, particularly bad to do that on short long arm suspension. Whenever you're doing the shims at the upper control arm, uh, this right here, let's say this was the front, up this way. Okay, so if I take some shims out and leave these like they are, which way is this going to go? It's going to go that way, isn't it? If I take some shims out of here and leave these alone, it's going to go that way. So if this one goes back, if that's how you change your caster on the ones that use shims. And I never really liked those shims, but they had, they used them for years and years and years. And some of the Chevrolet uh, little S10s and stuff had them all the way up into the 2000s. You know. um, some of them have adjusting bolts for camber, like you can, uh, you know, McBride got into this last semester. If you egg shape this hole right here, you can basically, you know, change your camber that way. Now that Taurus you guys were working on, it wasn't hooked up to the spindle like this. It had a different hookup on it. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But anyway, they make a kit that's got an egg-shaped bolt that you can put in there where it will move this in and out and change the, the uh, camber being the adjustment right there. Uh, your, your control arm support tower is there. You know, you got basically, these being your control arms. Remember, that's your, some people call that an A-frame. And when these bushings that are in this A-frame, they're like rubber and metal together. Whenever they wear out, it'll go, eh, 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 it'll squeak. You know, a lot of times when you got rubber and uh, steel that break loose from each other, it'll squeak like that. Uh, you got center support sagging on this one here because, you know, you got that going on. All right. And you can replace this with an offset inner shaft bushing on upper control arms if you need to to fix, you know, issues like that. There's, there's parts you can get. Positive camber angle, you might notice it results in a cone and that makes it go off in that direction. After that tire is already worn that way, even if you uh, get it straightened out, it may still pull because the tire has already changed shape. You see what I'm saying? All right, the car pulls towards positive camber uh, and that's not, didn't have to, but look at this. 
you got to do a little bit of additional camera on the left wheel to counter the road crown. You ever notice when you're driving on the road, if you're driving on the road that's got a pretty good crown, it'll fall away from the... Like if you get in the left lane, it may fall away pretty good because it's made to drive in the right lane. And, you know, just drive straight down the road to the right lane. But if you put it in the left lane, it may pull off the left a little, even if it looks like it ought to be. Now, most of the roads now don't have much of a crown. They're pretty, pretty flat, you know, especially for these, like these four lanes and all that. That's an additional quarter of a degree of positive cambrics. This is exaggerated, but they just wanted to give you an idea. Now, there's your zero. Now, we're talking about caster now. Pay attention to your caster because one of the biggest problems with this guy that I know that runs a tire shop over there has been doing this ever since he was 16 years old. And uh, he said uh, that uh, one of the biggest problems he has is people will learn how to get the numbers right on the machine, but they don't know really what they're adjusting. You know what I'm saying? And he started out using all of the old tools where he'd have the long stick with the two pointers on it and all this kind of thing. Uh, but I mean, I'm, I'm going to show you a funny picture in a minute. You know, somebody, that, people that really understand this can use tape measures, carpenters label, levels and stuff like that to do a, do a pretty decent wheel alignment, you know. Um, but I mean, you know, a lot of these mutters, you know, they do that kind of thing. All right, so your vertical zero reference would be right there on your on your uh, caster. There you'd be in your steering axis. The steering axis, when you change the steering axis forward or back, either you move that one forward or back or move that one forward or back, uh, you're basically, this is a short long arm suspension, but that steering axis is always what determines what your camber is. I'm, I'm sorry, your caster, and well and your camber too, but the caster is what we're talking about right now. Okay, so Positive casters like this. See, there's the front right here. So the, the more of a slant you got that way, that's positive. The more of a slant you got that way, that's negative. You got it? So what I always think about, you know, if you, the bottom of the tire is what I always think about, but you're moving the top. If the top is behind the bottom, you know, that's your positive caster. And this being your steering axis on this, right here on this strut, going up through that spring, right? Because uh, even if it's got McPherson strut, a lot of times they have, you know, use have a lower ball than one and all that. And there's your zero reference steering axis, and the load is going to be right here. The center line is here, the load's right here. And that's basically positive caster load projection. This is negative caster load projection with a uh, load behind the center line. Now watch this. They're using a caster like you see on these carts and all we roll around. See that? The load's projected right here. So technically that would be a table with positive caster because the load's in front of the, where the tire touches the ground. You got me? That makes sense? I mean, it seems kind of peculiar, but, uh, and that one right there, the load's behind the wheel on that one, so that's negative caster. Now don't get too confused by that because it'll confuse you if you're not careful because of the fact that this is doing like that, uh, but, but, the, but the steering axis is the big deal. Where the load is in relation to the center line of the tire is what is your, you know, caster is talking about. All right, steering axis goes through the ball joints like that, or the strut, and whatever you've got. Now this is really important. You can adjust the, you can do an alignment, and you can have everything in the green. Let's say that you got everything in the green, and you know you don't have a bad tire, but it's still pulling. If you look at those numbers, it's always going to pull toward the most negative caster and the most positive camber on that side. So if it's really close to the edge of the green, well, and you know, as far as negative camber goes, if the camber is a little bit negative but still in the green, and the cab and the uh, excuse me, caster is a little negative still in the green, and camber is a little bit negative, positive and still in the green, it's going to pull in that direction. So you got to do what you got to do to correct those. And, and sometimes it's easier than others. But you can see the difference in the steering axis, and it's going to pull that way. All right. Now, where's the steering axis on this one? You tell me. If you were going to draw a line, come here. Come here. Oh, no. Sure. So you get, here's the laser. You match that button to make the laser right. Draw me the steering axis. Where's the steering axis? Nope. Nope. Find the wheel. It's going to be right here. Through there. As I say, I know it's probably... Now this is a Ford Fusion and some Hondas has got these. 
That's a fairly common. See, the right here, this is carrying the load of the car, but it's still the steering axis is not going through that strut, which is pretty cool because it doesn't need that bearing on top of the strut to carry the load of the car. All right, steering axis is zero caster. Cars and trucks without power steering have a more vertical steering caster adjustment because it makes them easier to steer. You ever driven a car that was built without power steering? Yeah. And it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Huh? Well, when the power steering goes out, it's different because of the caster angle. It's hard to drive it. But if you got one that doesn't have power steering and never was built with it, it ain't really that bad to drive those because of the way they're set up. Uh, steering axis at positive caster. Now, this picture right here is not that great. You know, I mean, this is not really all that terrific. Uh, there's your camera changing on the turn as a result of positive caster. Tell you something you can do. If you've got your cat, whenever you're checking your caster, you can actually do this. Uh, let's say that you take a tape measure and you're measuring the front bumper between the front bumper and the ground. When you turn the wheels all the way to the left, it's going to raise the car up a little bit. Then when you turn it back to the center, it's going to come down to the bottom. Then when you turn it to the right, it's going to raise it up a little bit. And that's why when you let go, it wants to go back to the middle. You understand what I'm saying? It wants to return to the middle because you got positive caster. Let me ask you this. What if you had one that was, nothing's really wore out on it, but it's just loose enough to where it feels kind of squirrely, like it's too easy to steer going down the road? How could you increase that steering effort a little bit and make it not seem so squirrely? Positive caster is going to make it a little bit. You can make the caster, keep it in the, keep it in the green, but go more positive with it, and it's going to make it a little stiffer. You see, of course, then there's a variable power steering and all that kind of way. We variable assist power steering. We're going to talk about that today. Vehicles drive at low speed in parking lots a lot will wear the front tires out in short order. See it happen. When you're turning the inboard wheel, always turns a little bit sharper because it's making a smaller circle. That's called toe out on turns. If I ask you what toot is, that's what I'm talking about. Toe out on turns is toot. Right? That's the action of the car wheels. You got momentum of the car. You basically have to against that, right? The shoulder of the tire is carrying the load and both tires will wear out. See if it's if you basically got your um, that's going to be negative camera, that's going to be positive camera. And it's also going to be pulling. Uh, but that's where the tires are. Now this is toe in and that's toe out. And here's the other thing. What you'll typically have, if you're doing laminate on one that's, uh, you know, if you look at the specs on it, if one that's rear wheel drive is going to have just a little bit of toe in. Because when you're driving, it's going to push them out straight. Whenever it's front wheel drive, because they're pulling, you're going to have them towed out a little bit because it's going to pull into the middle. <laughs> See, when they're pulling. I mean, that's just something you don't need to think about a lot. All right, toes measured in inches or degrees, however your machine decides to do it or however you decide to do it. Uh, and, and basically what you're doing is you're measuring what, now what is the difference between this measurement and this measurement, okay? That's how you're going to do that. And that's why some people can do it with, uh, you know, with other stuff other than, you know, if you don't have a machine. And I'll show you a picture in a minute. I thought it was really cool how somebody do that. In the rear end of the vehicle, if they get crooked under the car, that thrust line won't be straight. So you got zero toe here and zero toe there. That's no toe at all. There's your thrust line right through the middle of the car. All right. Toe in wear on a bias belted tire, which is a non-radial, you know. But you'll see that sometimes on radials. If you drag your finger across that tire and you feel these little feathered edges, then it's sort of sliding down the road kind of sideways and it's wearing off crooked like that. And, you know, you'll see some. This looks like camera wear to me, but, I mean, I've seen on radial tires. If you just drag your hands across it, you'll feel that little sawtooth feel, you know, that they run. you go this way and that way, you can tell it's got that kind of a thing. On the rear, if the toe is off, it'll have a strange-looking... Uh, Diagonal wear pattern on them that looks kind of odd because if the toe is off in the rear, uh, the dragging the tire kind of sideways is not good for the tire on either tire. Okay, that toe angle, uh, toe angle illustration exaggerated, but this is a toe out on front wheel drive cars. You got they pull together whenever it's pulling. All right, there's your non adjustable angle. The non adjustable angles are the stuff, this is angles you cannot do anything about. Now, the people that have a continental frame straightener at a body shop, they may be able to fix it 
you know, by hooking up all that stuff and operating the hydraulics and pulling the car back in shape like it's supposed to be. My dad, back whenever he had his shop, he he had to he could do body work and all kinds of stuff. And uh, one time, this doctor's daughter that he that she had a little Volkswagen Rabbit, and somebody ran through a stoplight and hit the front of it and bent the car, you know, the whole front of the car over sideways. And so he got an estimate. This is in Birmingham. He got an estimate, and uh, the guy said he didn't want to. He didn't want to pay what they were going to pay a charge to fix that car in Birmingham. So he asked my dad if he could fix it. And he said, yeah, I can fix it. He said, well, you got a way to bring it back? <laughs> my dad guy was running a sawmill at the time, too. And he got his pickup, and he put a uh, big old 6 by 8 oak piece back there, with, you know, going across and made, made himself a makeshift wrecker with a big come along. And so uh, he went up there and he, to the dealership in Birmingham, and he hooked that uh, come along up and picked the front of that thing up and got it all chained off and towed it all the way back to Birmingham behind his truck and so he got to doing the work on it you know he took the fenders and stuff off of it and he saw where it bent over and he kind of eyeballed it and he hooked it to a tree with a chain and then he hooked his tractor to the front of it and snatched it back around straight <laughs> that was a frame straightener you know redneck or frame straightener yeah it worked and basically when he got it all put back together he said now he can put a slick paint job on one he made, he made it look like a brand new car and he really charged him all that much you know but I mean just thinking outside the box you know, yeah, I have this. This is something that needs to be done. This is how I would do it. If I chain it here and pull it there, it's going to straighten it up. Okay, uh, right wheel turns sharper when you're turning. See that? This is going to be less than 20 degrees. This is going to be 20 degrees, right? Left wheel turns sharper on that way. Now, I will tell you something. If you try to start building a go kart and you think you know a little something about steering geometry and you try to engineer that thing where you'll have toe out on turns and all, it is a heck of a lot more complicated. It's a yeah, it's nothing as easy it's as what it seems like it would be. Have you done tried that? Oh, I, I built a go kart. But was it, it was a nightmare? Was it fun? It was. It was a nightmare. I bring it up here sometime. Put it back in my truck. <laughs> I'm driving a parking lot out here. Yeah, these guys would be on crash to burn on that thing. <laughs> More hurt me than. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you drive, I bring it more. Learn this, guys. If I tell you to get up here on the board with one of my dry erase markers and draw this, I need you to be able to do it. See, there you go. It's right here is your steering axis inclination, right? And basically, they're showing this tire cambered, you know, positive. But basically, that's your center line, and this is the difference between straight up and the tilt of the steering axis. Now, why would they tilt the steering axis like that? Instead of just making it straight up and down? And we're talking camber-wise. It makes it more stable. Think about your table, man. If you got a table with a leg slanted, it's more stable, a more stable table. All right, all right. Uh, steering axis plus positive. You know, basically, you, you're going to actually take your whatever your camber is, and your plus you it, all that together is your included angle. The difference between steering axis and your actual center line of your tire, if it's leaning out, that's not really all that big of a deal. I mean, as far as you know, it's just so you'll understand what's going on there. Now look at this. When you hear somebody talking about scrub radius, this is important too. Uh, if you look at this, the steering axis inclination camber and camber lines, where they come together is way down here below the pavement. So your scrub radius is down here. This is positive scrub radius. We're going to look at negative scrub radius. See that right there? See how these, these two lines? And whenever you change this angle, you change the scrub radius on the tire. That's another thing that's going on whenever you did this tilt it in. You got to get it right though, because the scrub radius will be off. All right, so see how this has got negative scrub radius, and that intersection is right there. All right, now when you hear the term setback, if you're ever if you're if you're around a lot of people that do, or if you see it on the screen, or you read about it, this is what setback is. On one side of the car, you have a shorter wheelbase than the other side of the car. If it's crash-related setback. It causes an alignment pull to the side with a setback. In other words, if these tires are closer together, it's going to pull in that direction, right? If the rear axle is positioned correctly, in other words, if it's not crooked under there, and all the other parts of the system are in good order, our setback condition will create different wheelbase measurements for each side. Now, I'll tell you something that happened to me one time. Uh, I bought a, a 74 Ford pickup that had a, uh, paid a couple thousand dollars for it. It wasn't four years old at the time. But it had a, some extra leaf springs under it. Like it had, overload, it had load, overload springs, and then it had an extra leaf in the spring, and it rode like a Jersey wagon. The guy had a welder in the back of it. He was using it for a work truck, 
And then when he sold me the truck, I mean, it, it was kind of jacked up in the back and it, you know, was bouncing. So, I, I mean, it was hard ride. So I took all them springs out of there and everything, but I didn't have the bolt, the bolt that goes through all the leaf springs yeah. and puts them together. The only one I had was one I found in my toolbox. It was a grade five bolt and I put it through there and tightened it up and everything was okay. Until about a year later, I was driving along and I hit a pretty bad bump and it sheared that bolt and the axle got crooked under the truck. And I had to, you know, go get the right bolt to put under there. But anyway, but the bolt that was going through the thing was a lot longer, see, and it was too long that, you know, I ran out of threads trying to tighten it up on the other one. Um, but, hello, come on. There we go. Now, there's your top nut on your strut. Now, remember this, my car out there, it's got a bearing that's going to dry right in this area right here. When you turn the wheels, you hear it going, uh, 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 making a noise, you know. And if you hear any kind of a squeaking, it only does it when you turn the wheels. And you can reach up there and put your hand on the spring and say, okay, turn the wheel. If you feel it squeaking through the spring, that bearing in the top of that strut needs to be replaced. That would be the CV joint. Well, the CV joint's actually going to when you're turning. But, I mean, if you're just turning the wheel and the car is sitting still, and it's making a noise, it won't be a CV joint. That'll happen when the car is going. That goes clickety clickety clack 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 and that kind of thing, whatever that, that's going on. Uh, that's a drive line thing. But struts carry the weight of the car higher than the body of the car. You can see how that would give stability. It lowers the center of gravity. Makes it a whole lot better. Okay. Uh, alignment reference being right here. You know, you got front wheels aligned to the vehicle center line. That's pretty much the way it's supposed to be. There's your thrust angle. See with a crooked axle. That's what was going on with my truck. And, uh, you know, I've been driving along here and all of a sudden, boom, and all of a sudden I got the steering wheel like this and I'm going down the road kind of sideways. And if it comes back bad, bad enough, the drive shaft will come out, you know, which is a bad scene. Okay, front wheel's compensating. You, in other words, whenever somebody's having to steer it to make it go straight, that's not good. And there's your thrust line, you know, uh, toe set to thrust line. You know, sometimes people will try to set the toe to try to fix the steering wheel where it'll be straight. They don't pick up on the fact that the rear axles You've also got some setback issues here with that. You ever seen one doing that? <laughs> That's dog tracking. I mean, he's going straight down the road, but the truck's crooked because the axle's <laughs> crooked under the truck, typically. All right. All right, removing the bearing and hub assembly. So sometimes you'll have to change the, on some vehicles, they don't have an adjustment particularly some of the old ones, but even some of the newer ones too. They don't have, you know, when they don't have camber and toe adjustments, you actually have to pull that off and put shims in there. And it'll be a shim that's thicker on one side than the other. See that? And that, that changes it. Changes toe and camber on the rear wheels. If you got to change combination toe and camber, you, you put two shims and turn them, you know, counter to one another. And you can get all kinds of dead gum shims. And you can actually get little things for checking the shim thickness and see what you want it to do too, you know. See how those shims right there are made? How they're sort of wedge shaped and all that? Alright, shims galore for the rear. Alright, this right here, just about every front wheel drive vehicle has got alignment adjustments on the rear wheels now that, you know, look, may look something like that. And you guys were, there's a cam and bolt assembly like you guys were doing the other day sort of, right? You remember that? That's on the Corvette there. And there's your thrust line and your center line. Thrust line and the center line ought to be together. Right. And that's the end of the show. That was quick. We went through a lot of slides. And Tell me something you learned. Um, where the steering axle is. Huh? Like where the steering axle is. What the steering actually no, is? Where is that? Like, oh yeah. Exactly yeah, yeah I see what you're saying. Okay. All right. So alrighty then. Yeah, you seen that happen? Wondered about it before? Yes. Yep. I always wondered about that. Yep. Now we know.